G'day guys, if you're a keen rugby player and you want to get faster, stay tuned and watch this video as I have a whole speed session planned out that you can try starting at week one, which is this video. So g'day guys, I'm Alex from Axe Physio and yes, we're jumping into that speed session right now. Now with all good sprint programs, we are going to have a warm up. If you don't want to watch the warm up, go to the description. There are time stamped uh, segments of when the actual exercises occur. So please go to that if you just want the actual sprint stuff and the programming. I would really prefer you watch the entire video as I really want you to understand the why. Why are we doing this? How is it going to make us faster? How is it going to make us better rugby players? So let's get into it. We're going to start off with some walking lunges into an A skip hold. Uh, so that's when we're in that high position, in that athletic position. We're going to be doing three sets of eight reps. We're doing this to achieve triple extension, which is when our hips are tucked underneath us, our knee is straight, and our calf is pushed all the way to full extension. If you can't hold that position at the very top of the movement, in that isometric position where you're not moving, you're not going to have a good relationship with the ground and you're not going to be fast. We're using monster walks or leg swings to really get our leg nice and high, get the hamstrings warm and we're getting up onto our toes to use our calves and get them warm as well. Hamstrings are used a lot in upright running so when we've reached towards top speed so it's important we get them involved in our warm up routine. Once again we're doing three sets of eight reps per leg. I always like to get my hips going so I start in a open to close pattern, walking forward, start open which is the leg out to the side to close which is when the leg comes to the front of the body we can then repeat that and go in close to open so as it suggests leg starts in front we then open out to the back as mentioned before our hips are part of the triple extension so we want to make sure that the ball and socket joint is nice and warm so this is a great exercise just for that so there are two different distinctive parts of running we've got acceleration which is when we're bent over and then we've got upright running which is when we're in full flight and our body should be in a more upright position. In rugby more often than not we're going to spend a bit of time in the acceleration phase. Most importantly is the front leg. I want the angle of your shin or your lower leg to be of a similar angle to that of your back. If the angles are the same before your leg hits the ground you can immediately push off quickly. If your leg is in a forward position so it's further away from your body you then have to wait till you get in the right position to push off we want you to be in that position straight away so that when your foot touches the ground you can go and this is going to help your acceleration and get you faster in that first two or three steps on the rugby field which we know is crucially important to work on our technique of acceleration and also to warm up for our sprint session, we're going to be doing some wall marches. Starting with some singles, we're exchanging in the air and maintaining that triple extension position of our hip, knee and ankle. Our leg that is on the ground needs to be in that triple extension position, so our toe is coming towards the ceiling, our ankle is locked, our knee is locked, and our hips is locked and tucked underneath us. That is our triple extension. The leg that's in the air, the toe once again needs to be towards the ceiling. We can't be lazy and flopping around below towards the ground. And that leg is going to look a little bit like a Z. So the top leg is going to be in that Z-like position and what that means is when that leg comes and touches the ground, it takes its turn to be on the ground, it's already ready to come off the floor again. This is going to allow you to be really fast and reflexive and minimise your amount of time on the ground which will make you a faster rugby player. So starting off with those singles, we're doing two sets of three reps being as explosive as possible whilst holding a distinct end point to the rep. This should be really tiring and taxing on the body. We can then go to double wall marches and we're doing two sets of three reps on each leg. Once again, be as quick as you can and minimize the amount of time on the ground as possible during each of your reps. Finally, we're gonna finish with a triple exchange. So we're doing three reps, uh, two sets, and that'll round out the wall marching part of the warm up. Now we're working on upright sprinting and the technical and warm up components of this. To begin, we're going to start with small ankling. What we want to do is just quick exchanges onto the balls of our feet. The leg that's in the air, the big toe should be towards the ceiling, keeping that stiff ankle position that's similar to what you were doing in the wall marches. We then exchange over and over, just getting ourselves on our toes, getting warm. 
we then start to make bigger circle motions and this will turn into running by the time we get to the end of the drill so small circles into those medium circles into the big circles and you'll actually just feel like you're running and then let yourself go through that running motion keep exchanging those legs over make sure you keep those ankles in that solid position and then get to that high speed running where we're bringing that heel up towards our bottom as we turn over into high speed running Start with 2 by 5 meters for the small ankling and then 2 by 10 meters for the medium to large ankling. We're going to be doing some B skips. So this is getting up into that high athletic position. We're triple extending so our glutes are tight, our knees are locked, our ankles are solid and we're coming up into a stride and kicking out with that front leg to engage the hamstring. Once we've kicked out, we're snapping that leg back underneath us and the foot is contacting the ground that's right underneath our hips and knees. For this exercise, complete two rounds of a 10 meter grid. Moving on, we're gonna start moving more explosively and just added in some broad jumps synced together. I would suggest two rounds of three jumps maybe three rounds of three jumps depending on if you feel like you need to be a bit more warm this just engages the hip flexors gets us moving nice and quick now finally on to the actual sprinting we're working on two sets of three reps at 70 percent effort just working on our technique so we're working on a falling start into that acceleration position whereby our front shin and our trunk are of a similar angle this allows us to accelerate quickly so our first working block is gonna be three sets of three reps over a five meter distance and it's 90% effort. Here we're trying to work really hard to get our acceleration going and get quick off the mark. Here our second working block is gonna be 10 meters, three sets, three reps, 90% effort. Now we're just starting to get out of the acceleration phase into that upright running phase. It's really important that we stay low and then we build up naturally. We're not just shooting upright straight away. We should still maintain a bit of a forward trunk lean up until probably around that six to seven meters mark and we're only getting towards upright running towards that 10 meters, whereby just slow down naturally. Our final block is gonna be 20 meters, two sets of three reps at 90% effort. By the time we're at that 10 meter mark, we should be opening up into that upright running phase. Our heel should be coming around close to our bottom. This is where I want you working on that triple extension position. We're squeezing our glutes, we're spending as least amount of time on the ground as possible, and we're coasting through at around that 15 meter mark. Now here is one of the most important things I'll tell you in this entire video, is you need to rest between three to five minutes between each working set. This is so that your body has time to recover. Speed sessions is all about high stimulus to the body to create adaptation, to create change. If you are fatigued and you're not working to that 90% or more, that 95% or more, you are not gonna get those speed changes you want. It is minimal work time, but it's high intense effort. Make sure you rest appropriately between your sets. We need to also be doing a speed session once a week, once every seven days to maintain and improve these changes. So guys, that's our rugby speed session done. I've also got other content in the gym. So for strength, hypertrophy, power. Uh, so consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any more rugby content as it comes out. Uh, my name is Alex, I'm from Axe Physio and I look forward to seeing you in another video. I'll see you in the next one.